Now, I really have been waiting a little while to do this video on Eric Ten Hag and his tactics at Ajax. And it feels like now's the time. I'm not talking about his tactics and how it would apply at Manchester United, what would work with the squad. I'm saying, what has Ten Hag done between 2018 and 2022 that's made him one of the most revered young coaches in Europe? What has he done? What are his tactics been in those years and how has it developed in those times? I'm going to run through the tactics in 2018-19 and the tactics in now this season in 21-22. And look at the comparisons and look at the fundamentals in between both. Because I think it's going to be interesting to do this video. But if you will consider, please subscribe to United People's TV. Go down there. It'll only take you a second. It's free to do. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell as well. You get a ding every time I go live with a video. But what better way to start this video than to hear from the man himself on what he sees as the single most important thing tactically that he wants his teams to do. Om uh, tegenstander te vernietigen, moet je lopen zonder bal. Hè? Dat is een hele belangrijke sleutel in het succes. When it comes to off the ball movement, that really is the absolute central fundamental of Ten Hag's system. We can talk about the 4-2-3-1 setup. We can talk about how uh, his defense sets up when they're on the counter attack. Everything, and we will run through that. But just the fundamental there, off the ball movement, that is key for Ten Hag. And let's go in and let's speak about it, eh? because in 2018-19, before Ten Hag came in, Ajax were a middler team. They really were. They weren't uh, anywhere near the Champions League. They were a Europa League team. They weren't winning the Eredivisie. division. When he came in, that all changed. And if we look at that team that he had built in 2018-19, it was this team here. You know, you've got De Jong there in the middle with Scherner. You've got Van der Beek there as the sort of number 10 type player. Tadic. With Ziyech and Neres up front, no, not really a traditional striker inside that system, and we'll run through that. Masrawi and Tagliafico as the two fullbacks with Blind, De Ligt, and Onana as the three. Now, what he very much did inside this system was, in the build-up, it was all about one of these players dropping. So, uh, te te what normally happened is Tagliafico and Masrawi were to go up here, and then you would normally see Scherner or you would see De Jong. But kind of De Jong happened quite a lot. Dropping in to make a bit of a midfield three. But what always happens inside these, in, in both systems, in 2021 and in 2018, is just a creation of space and how all the players use it. So what you can see here is all of a sudden there's space there. So Van der Beek would drop into that, for example, at that time. Neres would drop deeper. What basically always happens inside the Ajax system under Ten Hag is that use of space. It's the creation of space constantly and how players use it. And it's not just about an individual in any way, shape or form. It's basically a fundamental that's that's drilled into all of the players. So if, for example, De Jong was to ever drop deeper down there to make it a sort of a back three, and tag, as I said, Tagliafico would go forward and Masrawi would go forward there. All of a sudden, there's lots of space here. So Van der Beek would drop deeper to, to exploit that space. And if you're then going to switch that and you're going to say, right, let's, let's take the play forward, what would happen with Ajax going forward? It will be a very, very similar style of play. What they always try to do is create situations where there's a lot of players available for the pass forward. So whether it's Tagliafico on the ball down here, all of a sudden he's going to have three or four players in space. Ajax have always got options, always had options in 2018, 19, and those sorts of fundamentals have been taken forward here. And if you're looking at how Donny van der Beek is a player that so many people have, uh, have talked about at United uh, over the last, what, two years that he's been here and how he's not really, let's be honest, he's not been the player that he was for Ten Hag, but he was fantastic inside that Ten Hag system. When it comes to the attackers, Neres and Ziyech, they they tended to drop a little bit deeper. They narrowed themselves. And Van der Beek, almost at times, would operate basically as a supporting striker alongside Tadic. He played a very different role for Ajax under Ten Hag that season than he's played for Manchester United. At Manchester United, he's sort of operated more in these positions. Occasionally, he's got towards the edge of the box. But like when he scored on his debut for Man United, was it against Crystal Palace? I think it was. Van der Beek's most dangerous in these sorts of areas. And that was why he was so good in that 2018-19 season. He scored away at Juventus. He was important in the game at the Bernabeu as well. But Tadic wasn't a, tradi a, a traditional striker in that sense. And Neres and Ziyech, as I said, their tendency was to drop narrow. Any width would come from overlapping fullbacks. But the main thing that they always tried to do was just create options. Constant, constant options. And look, 
Let's go back here and let's get another clip here from Ten Hag. And, and, and his sort of, uh, as I said, the obsession with creating space and his concept that that stresses out the opponent because they've got to focus on different players. Daardoor de dreiging hebben en noem het de stress brengen bij de tegenstander. Stress brengen? Eh, stress brengen. Eh, waardoor eh, ze zullen toch op, uh, ik denk dat het, wie is het daar bovenin? Is het David of is het Doesan? Ik denk Doesan. Aan de andere kant? Ja, aan de andere kant. Die daar staat bij de tweede paal. Die trekt de andere kant op? Nou, die trekt daar de aandacht. So what he's saying there, look, if we go back to the tactics board here, whether that's David, whether that was Neres, holding the width down here. As I said, tradic typically, Neres and Zeke would drop inwards, be like inverted wingers. But they had the ability to go wide and drag the defence wide, and that therefore creates space that Tadic or Van der Beek could exploit. Space and space creation has to be the one fundamental of this system. If you look at the actual style of it, it's a 4-3-3. Typically with two holding midfielders, well, two central midfielders rather than holding midfielders, one who's a playmaker, one who's uh, more of a, you know, breaking up the play, if you know what I mean. Um, playmaker and a play breaker. And then that number 10 who really operated between the lines. That's how he liked his team to play. That's how his team operated in 2018-19 to great success. Champions League semi-finalist knocked out by that last second winner from Lucas Moira. And... It was a wonderful team, but that team got taken apart. Absolutely taken apart. In the, in the two uh, two summers that followed, they lost... Who did they lose? De Ligt, they lost De Jong, they lost uh, Van der Beek, they lost Ziyech, and they lost Schoener. He had to completely rebuild his team. And this is the crucial thing that we all have to... That, there are subtle differences, and maybe not so subtle differences, between that team in 2018-19 to 21-22. But the fundamentals stay absolutely the same. And that, for me, is the biggest tactical takeaway, I would say, to take from this video on Ten Hag. You know, his system is embedded. In the three, four years it took him to develop this new team here, and it is new. There's so many new names in there. You've got Berghaus, who I've spelled completely wrong. Nice one, Sam. Ber Berghoogs. Nice one. Uh, how embarrassing. Got to check that before I go live. Uh, Anthony on the wing. Haller up front. Alvarez and Gravenberch. Timber. Martinez. A substantially different team, but the fundamentals remain exactly the same. You've got your two players there in midfield. You've got Gravenberch and Alvarez. Gravenberch, who's come through the academy, and Alvarez, who was brought in. Uh, he's a Mexican midfielder. I don't know where he was brought from. But it, but the same sort of concept. It will be Blind going up here for the over... Not so much overlaps as such, because that's not Blind's game. But it'll be Gravenberch. I think it was Alvarez. Was it Gravenberch? I think it's Gravenberch that sort of moves more forward. Alvarez would drop deep, making that back three when in possession they go forward and it allows them to have two players always in space in midfield and it's again about space creation now Tadic has moved out to the wing here and he's been very effective Tadic is a, a certainly one of those you know the, something that's always said about a, a good coach is player development Tadic was very much just a bit of an average player really at Southampton wasn't he maybe that's a bit unfair to call him an average player but he certainly wasn't the player that he's become there at Ajax. And that's down to coaching. That's down to the system that he's building it in. Masraoui, he survived from that team back in 2018-19. So is Daily Blind. So is Onana. And so has uh, Tadic. Other than that, we're looking at seven different players. But we're looking at an extremely similar system with the same principles that applied in 2018-19. It's the creation of space. It's the concepts of overloads. It's, a, it's the concept of constant movement. If there's space, drop into it. It's not about one. It's not about one particular position that will drop into that space. It's about every single player having that mentality. If they see a bit of space, boom, drop deeper, come back into it. The big difference between that 2018-19 team and this team is Sebastian Haller. So if you look, uh, as I said, back in 2018-19, they've got Tadic up there. Haller is a completely different type of target man. And it's given a new element of directness to Ajax's system, which didn't exist back in 2018-19. They're not afraid to use it. I would say they're quite... One thing between all of the four years under Ten Hag is they are quite direct. It, you know, it, Tiki Taka, as far as I remember Tiki Taka and what it is, that's Barcelona. That's just a way of basically possession until you break the, the other team down because it's so damn bored. 
Ten Hag plays a little bit more vertical. He, he, he plays a little bit more direct. He's not afraid to... The teams are, the teams don't necessarily just pass it around the midfield and pass the teams to death. They're not afraid to play one, two, and play it through. And with Haller, what you've seen this season under Ajax is Tadic hasn't been afraid to hold a bit more width. And Anthony, for sure, hasn't been afraid to hold more width because all of a sudden, they've got a man in the middle that they know that they can fire crosses into. And Haller has been extremely effective at doing that this season. So I would say they were a little bit more narrow back in 2018-19 compared to what they are now. But it's just, they've added a new element to the game with Haller, which has made them a little bit less unpredictable, or less predictable, if you know what I mean. But the same concept exists, as I said, in the middle. Graven Birchall or Alvarez, one of them will drop a little bit deeper, make it into a back three. Blinden Masrawi would, would go wide up here to offer up Outlets, Daily Blind, we all know about his passing out from the back and what he did at Manchester United. He's done at Ajax well as well. But there's the, there really are a lot of similarities between what happened in 2018-19 and what happened in 2022. And, and it's, he, it's all about that constant movement. It's all about the fact that always an Ajax player will look up and have three or four players available for the pass. And that lack of movement has been a fundamental reason why Manchester United have been so poor. For a lot of years. It's why the pressing system, we got so excited about it. If you're looking at the pressing system inside Ajax, it's kind of similar to how Man United had played a couple of times this season. Crystal Palace, just remember that game against Crystal Palace? We counter-pressed, we pressed high. The concept is to win the ball up here. Uh, the team's not afraid of overloading. The team's not afraid of squeezing over here and leaving space there because the concept is you're going to win the ball back before it gets there. Ajax do that. They do that quite well, and they do that very well, actually. I think it's only, well, Liverpool are one of the only teams who have pressed more than um, Ajax this season. But the fundamental, as I said, the fundamental takeaway from this is that concept of movement. Look, I'll play the clip from Ten Hag again. Om uh, tegenstander te vernietigen, moet je lopen zonder bal. Hè? Dat is een hele belangrijke sleutel in succes. He really does have an obsession with off the ball movement. He had the obsession with the off the ball movement in 2018-19 with that team. And despite having seven different players in the outfield, the same concept exists with this Ajax team now. It's all about movement. It's all about creation of space and using that space. And it's not about one position. Every position across the whole team, everybody is drilled the same. And that is why he's been able to rebuild this team. Because while, as I said, while seven players changed, the principles and the fundamentals remained exactly the same. And he knew that whoever was coming through, Haller, whether that's Graven Birch, whether that's Alvarez, whoever we brought into that system, the role was very clearly defined and they knew exactly what to do. We need that at Manchester United. Will Ten Hag come to United? We still don't know at this point. He seems to be the clear favourite. He seems to be the clear favourite among United fans. He's my favourite choice. And I think this identity is a, is a major reason why he's my choice. Watch. I've spoken about him before. His philosophy, I don't believe, is based uh, as strongly on an actual identity of football. And I think Poch's teams are more recognisable out of possession than they are inside possession, which kind of says a lot about what the philosophy is. But that's my take on Ten Hag's tactics, looking at what happened in 2018-19, why it was so effective, and also how he was able to rebuild that three, four years later, despite having such a different team. But that fundamental of space creation, players moving, creating opportunities for their teammates and not leaving them with no opportunities so they've got to turn backwards and pass it around the back four, which United do so often. That's something that will be completely eliminated under Ten Hag. You let me know what you think about this video in the comments, as I'm sure you will, anyway. Uh, make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV. I have, I'll have plenty more content. There always is. Daily lives and some bang average videos. But some good ones, too. Take it easy, everyone. Let me know what you think.